So, um, hi everyone. Today's session is the final session on assignment discussion on personal and professional development in health and social care, Unit 4. Uh, and my name is Shazia Khan. So I'm just going to go through the unit spec with you so you've got a little bit of an idea of what we need to do in each of the learning outcomes. And it's just a recap on the learning outcomes that we've gone through, the four learning outcomes. Now, these learning outcomes have been recorded uh, and they are on Moodle for your access and all the other additional information, the assignment brief, everything is on Moodle for your attention. So please go on to Moodle. If you have any issues, just email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. So let's go through the uh, unit specification and then we'll go through the assignment discussion session. So the unit aims to develop uh, the knowledge and understanding of personal and professional development. Learners will uh, develop techniques for planning, implementing and evaluating their own personal and professional development and understanding of how to support others in their personal and professional development. So when it comes to your assignment, you need to put that as a title page. OK, so that's your title there. Can you see me highlighting it? That's your title. That's the unit. And then you need to put the unit code and this is the unit code, and you need to put your name as well and a contents page, which we'll go into later on, okay? So in order to achieve this unit, learners must produce work demonstrating achievement of the learning outcomes at the standards provided by the assessment criteria. Uh, to achieve merit or distinction grade, the learner must demonstrate that they've achieved all the criteria for these grades. Learners should prepare a personal development plan to meet future career aspirations. So we're going to go through each learning outcome and we're going to look at the past merit and distinction. And then we'll look at the activity, the assignment brief. So do you um do you know what you are aiming for, Abim? Do you Abim Bola, do you know what you are aiming for? Solomon, do you know what you are aiming for? A past merit or distinction? Solomon, are you on? Okay, so we're going to look at number one to understand. This is learning outcome one we've looked at. To understand career pathways in health and social care. And we looked at to get a pass mark, you need to look at 1.1 1 .1 is to analyse different career paths in the health and social care sector which we'll be looking more in detail at 1.2 research one potential opportunity for personal career would m1 assess your own skills and experience against identified potential career choices and one d1 oh, to evaluate your personal that. development uh, learning outcome two to understand the importance of personal development and the processes and principles and techniques 2.1 explain the importance of personal development 2.2, explore the principles and processes and techniques for personal development and professional development. Learning outcome one, learning outcome two, and learning outcome three. This is three and one. You need to adjust the plan in response to your feedback. So you need to do a developmental plan. In learning outcome three, you need to, we looked at, can present a personal and professional development plan. 3.1, prepare a personal development plan for progression in health and social care. 3.2, obtain feedback on personal and professional development plan. And then the final learning outcome, understand how to contribute to the personal and professional development of others. 4.1, analyze the characteristics of effective learning culture. 4.2, analyze the role of managers in the personal and professional development of others. And 4D1, assess how managers and team, um, team leaders can develop an effective learning culture. So these are the requirements for the assessment criteria. Um, so we're going to just have a look at the indicative content as well, so you've got a better idea. So Richard, uh, Abimbola and Suleiman, are you all on the right course? Yeah, personal and professional development in health and social care? Because I think, Richard, are you on the right one? See, hello. Yeah. Okay, because I've not seen you. I've only seen Suleiman and Abimbola. 
Okay, so I'm ju I'm just giving yes. you a recap, everyone, of the uh, what we've done in each learning outcome. So the first one is learning outcome one, and here we looked at the understanding career pathways in health and social care. So we looked at a range of pathways and roles in health and social care. Does anyone remember any of the pathways they are in health and social care? Give me an example. Yeah, uh, the pathway of uh, health and social care is one, and um, to be a lesson is one. Yeah, yeah. and the, what about like, um, the qualifications and requirements, because we looked at them as well, didn't we? Yeah, the qualifications, I think, uh, you, should, you should have a diploma in... Yeah. A diploma in... Yeah. Yeah. So we looked at the requirements of the qualifications, experience, characteristics and ethics in learning outcome one. We then went on to look at the routes identified in the roles, so things like apprenticeship, qualifications, university degrees, uh, we looked at potential employers in the field, so where you wish to work, skills required for the career role. Uh, we looked at responsibilities and expectations in identified job roles and identifying your own interests, skills and attributes. So skills audit that you need to do and sources of careers information. That's learning outcome one. Then we went on to look at learning outcome two, which was to understand the importance of personal and professional development and the processes and principles and techniques. So why do you think when we looked at personal development and professional development, why do you think that's so important? Why do you think it's important, personal and professional development? Okay, what I think is important because uh, personal, uh, personal and professional development, if you have personal and professional development, it's going to help you to achieve your goal, anything that you want to do in future. And you achieve works. your goals. It's going to improve your skills, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's going to yeah to improve your skills, right? And you know you have continuous um you know you will provide a, a quality service. So you know you need to be on top of things. Your CPD needs to be improved. You know, and it'll, for your career progression, in case you want to you know progress in your career. How to set personal targets, why they are needed. We looked at the processes of personal development, identifying gaps, target setting, development opportunities, measuring achievement and reviewing. We looked at the process of reflection using reflect reflective logs, the importance of reflection models such as Kolb, Gibbs, Morrison, reflective cycles, events, feelings. Uh, we looked at an evaluation of your knowledge and understanding uh, against standards and the SWOT analysis. Um, collection and use of feedback in your own performance and the importance of self-awareness. We also, in Learning Outcome 2, looked at the sources of feedback, so feedback from managers, colleagues, service users. Um, we also looked at developmental activities such as coaching, mentoring, uh, how to review progress against plan and how to use the resources, managing development and CPD. We then went on to look at Learning Outcome 3, which was to present a personal and professional development plan. Types of plan, such as a focused personal and professional progression, identifying qualification needs for identified career paths, and they need to update on latest treatments and approaches, prioritising their learning needs, considering importance, relevance and availability of learning, target setting, example, smart targets, um, and reviewing progress against the plan, so the cycle of continuous development. So then we looked at the final learning outcome, which was to understand how to contribute to personal and professional development of others. So here we looked at how an effective learning culture can support an organisation and its staff. So why we need a good learning culture within an organisation. We looked at the characteristics of effective learning culture, so things like prioritising learning, values, processes and practices that encourage and support continuous learning and development, how managers continue to create an effective learning culture, so facilitating learning by example, uh, developing uh, learning opportunities, using coaching and mentoring, using appraisals, you know, and why they are needed, the appraisal techniques. We looked at coaching and mentoring as a support mechanism and then giving effective feedback on performance. And I know we talked about feedback um, and, and lots of 
individuals don't like feedback. Why do you think feedback is so important in, in, to give to an individual? Richard uh, and Bimbola, why, why do you think it's Solomon? Why do you think it's so important to give feedback? Okay, it, to give the feedback will help you to know your mistakes. Yeah. And also help you to correct it. In case there is an advice for your, maybe your manager or advisor to give you, if uh, so that he'll give you. Yes. Yeah. Abimbola, why do you think feedback is so important? Or Richard, anyone? For proper record keeping. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to get feedback to help you improve. And if there's any areas, you know, you need to work on, the feedback will, you know, help and support you. Uh, use of professional supervision and facilitating access to development opportunities, considering time, cost and availability. Uh, and then we looked at the performance management and techniques. So this is all learning, uh, a recap on what we've looked at on learning outcome one, two, three and four before we go into the assignment discussion. And, and this is uh, just so you've got an idea of what we did. Now, all the recordings for all the learning outcomes have been submitted on, they are on Moodle for your, uh, uh, to look at and to use. And uh, the, this um, unit specification is on Moodle as well. And it looks at each learning outcome um, and how you would develop each learning outcome and how you would, uh, what sources and what resources you would use. So there are links there for you. This is on Moodle with the assignment brief on Moodle, okay? Has anyone got any questions before we go on to the assignment discussion? And also, um, this is um, a, an assessment criteria, uh, a table of how you would get each if you wanted a merit or distinction. So does anyone have an idea of what they want to uh, aim, aim for? Abimbola, do you? What would you be aiming for? A merit, pass, merit or distinction? Uh, I'll, I'll be for distinction. I have distinction in my name. Excellent, Richard. <laughs> and I hope to have a distinction. <laughs> I've been bothered. Do you know what you want to aim for? <laughs> it's very good you're aiming for a distinction, Richard. Yeah. Suleiman? Yeah, I'm aiming for distinction, right? Excellent. And I've been No? So when you aim... Abimbola, can you hear me? I'm hearing Hello? you. Hello? For the network. Yes, Is this, but are you aiming for a distinction? Goes off. Abimbola, we can't, I can't hear you clearly. Calls back. So I think I when maybe when we finish I can look uh, bad. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can't so, hear you so, much. The network is bad. Yeah, so if you're aiming for the pass, you only need to do all the pass requirements. Okay, these are all the pass ones. If you're aiming for a merit, you need to do all the pass and the merit. If you're aiming for a distinction one, you need to do all the pass, merit, and distinction. You can't just do the pass and then move on to the merit because you haven't completed the distinction. So you need to complete all of them to get a distinction, which we'll go through in a little while so you've got a better idea. Okay, so I'll just get rid of that. And the next one I'll share with you is um, the element of the assignment discussion. Okay, so you have a better idea. Has anyone got any questions before we go on to the assignment discussion? Okay. So can you see the assignment slides here? Is everyone able to see the slides? Suleiman, can you see the slides? Yeah, I can see 
Yeah, okay. So let's start with the assignment discussion. So the assignment discussion is Unit 4, Personal and Professional Development in Health and Social Care. And the uh, level is Level 4 Diploma in Health and Social Care. And uh, the assignment discussion is um, today. So we th that we'll be doing today, okay? So the unit aim is to develop the knowledge and understanding of personal and professional development. Uh, learners will be able to develop techniques for planning, implementing and evaluating their own personal and professional development and an understanding of how to support others in their personal and professional development. So these are the learning outcomes that you need to do. So you've got learning outcome one, and, and these learning outcomes are the ones that you are using to help you with the assignment, okay? You've got learning outcome one, which we went through, understand career pathways in health and social care. Just let me just share it again, because this is, uh, right. okay, so then we've got uh, learning outcome two, which is to understand um, the importance of personal and professional development and the processes, principles and techniques used. Learning outcome three, uh, to present a personal and professional development plan. And finally, learning outcome four, to contribute to the personal development of others. So let's carry on. So here you have an assignment declaration. Now, why do you think it's so important to do an assignment declaration? Richard, why do you think it's so important to do an assignment declaration? Hello, please can you come again? It's breaking. It's a what, sorry? Uh, it's breaking. I'm not getting clearly. Yeah, or on plagiarism and stuff. Okay, you are declaring. Why are you declaring that the work is yours? Yeah, so an assignment discussion, uh, assignment declaration, sorry, and the link is there for it, okay? And this is declaring that the work you have done is your work, is your own work, and you have not copied, so you haven't used AI, uh, and if you have used AI, the threshold is 20%. It needs to be below 20%, okay? And you need to make sure that you are looking at the declaration. So the declaration link is just there. And if you look at the declaration, it ac actually says that I confirm that this assignment is my own work uh, and that you are, uh, that it is not plagiarized, okay? And that the sources that you have used have been referenced and that you've provided tables that are, your, that are not your own work, but you've referenced them and you haven't used anyone's others, anyone else's work to copy, okay? And that you have understood the policy around uh, disciplinary action for plagiarism, okay? And the policy you certify that you understand that this work is yours and it is... Uh, in line with the college's policies on plagiarism. So, you know, plagiarism we're gonna go through when we're going through the assignment is really important that you do not plagiarize you, your work. Make sure you don't use AI. Uh, you know, if you use it to help you and support you, make sure it's, you are, it is under 20% because it needs to be less than 20%. But you need to make sure you are, because you are declaring it, you are signing a document to say, this is your own work, you've not copied it, and you've not produced someone else's work, okay? So, and the declaration is available for you on, uh, the link is there. So if you go to that link there, at the bottom of there, the link is there that you could get the declaration when you submit your assignment. Has anyone got any questions on the assignment declaration? This must be submitted with your assignment, okay? So we'll move on. So, What information needs to go on the assignment? So at the start of the assignment, you need to have your name on, you need to have your registration number on, and you need to have unit level on. So in your case, it's level four health and social care, and the unit you are doing is personal and professional development 
in health and social care assignments. So you need to have that as on a separate page, your name, your registration number, the unit name, and the, uh, the, the assignment as well, okay? Why do you think that's important to have? Why do you think that you need to have that on your assignment? Anyone, why do you think it's so important? It's important because the reader, the uh, person reading it is able to understand what, what level you are doing, whose assignment it is and the registration number. So plagiarism and collusions. Students must submit work that is their own work. So that's why I was telling you it's so important when you sign that declaration, you are signing saying that it's your own work. Plagiarism is the thoughts, ideas and words of another person as if they were your own work. Collusion may occur when students' assignments are very similar and in some cases identical of that of another fellow student. This also amongst to plagiarism. Plagiarism is taken very seriously and the students are strongly recommended to refer to the academic misconduct policy, which is available on Moodle. So the policy for uh, plagiarism is on Moodle and you, when you are signing that declaration, you are making sure you are confirming that you have read the policy. So do not plagiarize, do not use AI uh, to do your assignment, do not use someone else's work because this will impact on your uh, issue around submitting your work. Okay, so now at the start of the assignment, so your table, you have a table of contents. Table of contents is really important because the reader is able to identify what elements of the assignment you've done and where you've placed it, okay, and which page it's on. Font size 12, okay, it needs to be 1.5 line spacing and page numbers to be inserted. So make sure you insert your page numbers. Uh, people have inserted in the um, header and footer their name, which helps as well. So in all of the header and footer, if you put your name in there, it will go through on each page. Now, that is up to you because you've got it at the start of the page, but some people do do that, okay? And it's a professional way of it, uh, submitting an academic piece of work. Page numbers, <clears throat> again, inserted at the start of every assignment. It will be this assignment, it may be another assignment, any assignment. You need to have an introduction. Why is an introduction so important? Richard, why do you think an introduction is so important? It can be... To, highlight, to highlight the objective of um, yeah. what you are actually um, yes. writing on. Okay, so does it have to be a long introduction? No. No, no. It's just getting introducing yourself into what you're doing, what the assignment is about, and just get an introduction into the assignment. So it doesn't have to be long. It could be four or five lines, just introducing the uh, assignment. So make sure you are putting all the assessment criteria in headings, which we're going to look at a little bit so you've got a better idea. Make sure you are not changing the wording of what you are being asked because some students, what they do is change the wording. Now, why are you changing the wording? You can just copy and paste from the assignment, the wording. And if it's 1.1, 1.2, just put that in. Do not change the wording. If it says describe, put describe. Don't change it to explain. Whatever the assignment is saying, make sure you are sticking to that. General information. The top part of this unit will be delivered at UK Varsity Online, which we've gone through. Number of texts related to the, uh, everything can be found on the VLE, which is Moodle, your assignment discussion, your uh, unit brief, all your learning outcome uh, PowerPoint slides with recorded slides. And this will be recorded and this will be on Moodle as well. So it, you can refer to this to help you when it comes to your assignment. Study skills. So the study skills used, developed and assessed through assignments are critical thinking, uh, planning and organizing and time management, which is really important. Research and gathering information, note taking and summarizing, analysis, written skills, academic skills, including referencing, so which we'll go through a little bit more, application of IT skills and reflection. Make sure your work is an academic piece of work and do not use bullet points, okay? 
bullet points is not an assignment it's an academic piece of work okay so you need to make sure it flows okay so let's go on to the tasks there's two tasks and we're looking firstly at task one of two so task one assignment scenario so you need to prepare a career development plan and explain the processes and techniques used to plan personal and professional development you should include your own reflection on the development process and the plan you have produced. So you need to produce a development plan. Your plan should set out potential next stages for your career in health and social care. Okay, so let's move on to the task. So the number, number of points that you need to do in the task. So when you are doing your contents page, you will have each one of these. So can you see these, these elements of it? So this is what you should be doing. Firstly, you need to look, this is your heading, okay? You can put that as a heading. Uh, you need to analyze career pathways in health and social care, okay? So that's your heading. So how would you, would you do that as a heading and then write under it? Richard, would you do that as a heading and write underneath it? So that would be your, that because here you've got in task one, for the past criteria, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six things to do, okay? So yeah. would, you, would you put that, this part of it, as a heading and then write under it the answer? Yes. Yes, excellent. So you would write that as a heading and you would write your answer under it. Okay. Yeah. Do not, please again, I reiterate, do not change the wording. As it says, analyze different career pathways in health and social care. Okay. So I've given you, I've even been so nice and I've given you literally where you can find the answer. Okay. So you go to AC 1.1. And it's page six onwards of learning outcome one. So you need to go to learning outcome one, okay, and look at pages six onwards to look at the different career paths. Is that okay? That's where you will find it. Abimbola, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah? That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Sorry? It's okay. Is that okay? Excellent. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, I'm okay. Excellent. Thank you. So the second part of it is the second bit of uh, uh, task one is to research one area of potential opportunity for personal career. And that is AC 1.2 and page 11 onwards. OK, so if you look at a uh, different career, what would you look at in regards to that? What kind of stuff can you look at? If you research one area, could it be? Maybe a manager in that area. It could be, you know, it could be um, you want to look at a healthcare IT manager. So research one area for opportunity for personal growth. Again, do not change the wording. This is on AC 1.2 and it's on page 11 onwards on learning outcome one. You would look at learning outcome one slides to get this. Is everyone okay with that? Let's move on to the third one. Yes. So the third one is to explain the importance of personal and professional development, why it's so important. And for that, we're looking at learning outcome two. Okay, we're looking at learning outcome two and we're looking at AC 2.1 on learning outcome two, and it's on page six onwards. So we're looking at things like career advancement. We're looking at things like, you know, CPD, continuous professional development. We're looking at patient uh, safety, quality care, you know, personal development, why it's so important, uh, ethically, leadership development to progress in your career, things like that. And that's AC 2.1, and it's pages six onwards on learning outcome two. So these are the three parts. The fourth one is to explore the principles, processes, and techniques for personal and professional development. Okay, and that is looking at AC 2.2, page 11 onwards on learning outcome two. And this is looking at the different types of uh, principles, processes, techniques, 
for personal and professional development. So things like if you're looking at principles, looking at self-reflection, uh, lifelong learning, it could be things like, you know, continuous improvement, flexibility, uh, and the process could be things like self-assessment, uh, learning and development activities, feedback and reflection, evaluation, and then the techniques could be things like uh, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and then SMART goals, you know, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, and journaling, uh, networking, and professional organizations. So these are kind of elements of that you need to look at. AC 2.2, uh, page 11 onwards on learning outcome two. So the next part of it is to prepare uh, professional and um, personal and professional development plan for progression in career in health and social care. So you need to prepare a personal development plan um, to look at things like, you know, uh, self-assessment, identifying your career goals. It could be your SMART objectives, uh, developmental areas. And these, this development plan, I think there's, um, there's an... Um, a template of that on Moodle for you. There's all templates of, you know, your development plans, your SWOT analysis on Moodle, so you can refer to that. And that's AC 3.1, page five onwards on learning outcome three. Then the final part for of the, pa the pass element is to obtain feedback on personal development plan. So that's looking at trying to get feedback on that. And here you would look at uh, learning outcome three slides, page 11 onwards, and it's AC 3.2. So looking at the feedback element, peer reviews, supervisory review, mentorship, uh, there was the 360 degree feedback, self-assessment, surveys, and questionnaires. So these are elements of the pass. Is that okay so far? Any questions on task one? No, 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 Abim, Abim, any questions? So this, if you do all of these, make sure you do not che change no. e what the question is asking you. Make sure you okay. are leaving it as analyze, research, explain, explore, prepare, and obtain. Do not change the wording, please. Each one is a heading, okay? And that's how it's going to look professionally. Do not use bullet points. Just write under the, the answer. Make sure, and this is all for a pass. OK, now, if you want to get the extension activities, if you want to. So if you want to get a pass, you will only do the pass ones. If you want to get a distinction or merit, you will do the merit and distinction. You will do all pass and all merit and distinction. You will not just choose and pick. OK, so this is extra. So if you want to do extra. So you look at if you want to get a merit, you will do the merit ones. You would look at assessing your own skills and experience against identified potential career choices. And for this, you are going back to learning outcome one and you are looking at um, a one M1, which is page 18 or Woods. And this is looking at your own skills and experience against identified career choices. So here you could look at self-assessment. You could look at the element of researching career requirements you could look at comparing your skills and requirements. And this is from page 18 onwards. And you would create a personal development plan. So it could be a smart one, uh, smart, measurable, uh, specific, measurable, achievable, time bound, and identify your goals and everything, okay? Then you would go on to, uh, for the next merit one, so there's two parts to a merit one, adjust your plans in response to your feedback. And for this one, you need to look at learning outcome three and you need to look at page 16 onwards, okay? And that would look at things like adjusting your uh, plan in response to any sort of feedback. So if you get feedback from someone, maybe your supervisor, your manager, a mentor, you are adjusting your plan according to that. So you would look at your review, your feedback carefully. You would identify areas for adjustments. So, you know, any improvements or adjustments you need to make prioritize your feedback, update any action plans, set any action items, seek additional input, communicate, monitor, seek continuous feedback, and this would help you identify that. So these are two parts for the merit ones. So you must do all of them for the pass 
and you must do two of them if you want to get a merit. Now, if you're aiming for a distinction, like Richard said, yes, Richard? Is that right, Richard? You're aiming for a distinction? Yes, yes, Excellent. yes, yes. So you yes. would do all of them. You would do all the pass. You would do all the merit. And then you would go to the distinction one, okay? And here, you would, to achieve a distinction, your plan and explanation must include, you must evaluate your own personal development today against requirements for your chosen career path. And that is looking at learning outcome one. You go to page 24, and that gives you more idea of how to answer this one. So you will look at your own requirements uh, you could review your career requirements. You could look at your skills, assess your skills and experiences. You could identify your skill gaps. So it's really important to identify any skill gaps you have. Uh, evaluate personal and professional development activities. Uh, reflect on any achievements. You know, Consider any accomplishments that you've done. Uh, acknowledge any challenges because, you know, in, in life when you're doing a personal development or professional development, you will have some challenges. Challenges are always coming across. Create an action plan. Continuously monitor and adjust this so it'll change all the time. It won't stay the same because, you know, when you're given feedback, your development plan will change because you're getting feedback to say you could do this or you could do that, you know. Identify your strengths, areas for improvement, further developments and any action points as well, okay? So that could be continuous monitoring and reviewing it. So that is the distinction element of task one, okay? So can Richard, can you just tell me what you need to do to get to do task one to get a distinction? So what do you need to cover, Richard? Do you need to cover all of these? Yeah, you need to cover all of that before you yes, go to the and next Do you need task. to cover all of this as well? Yes, yes. Excellent. To to the next time to get the session. Yes. So you need to make sure you cover all of task one and all of task two to get, sorry, all of task one and all of the extension activity for merit and distinction to get the distinction. Okay? Is everyone clear with that? Abimbola, are you clear? Yeah. Excellent. So the learning outcomes and assessment criteria we've used for task one is learning outcome one, AC 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 M1, 1 D1, and learning outcome two, AC 2.1, 2.2, learning outcome three, AC 3.1, 3.2, and 3 M1. And this is all on your slides. Now we're moving on to task two. Okay, so task two. You are employed as a trainee manager in a health and social care organisation and you have been asked to present a report that explains how managers can contribute to learning and the personal development of staff within an organisation. So your report must include... Let's go... Analyze the characteristics. So this is the bit first part. Analyze the characteristics of learning, effective learning culture. And here we are looking at learning outcome four. Okay. And when you look at the learning culture, we are looking at page five onwards and learning outcome four. So we're looking at analyzing the characteristics of effective learning culture. This is for pass marks. So you would look at emphasis on continuous learning open communication, things like valuing learning and development, uh, learning opportunities, feedback, reflection, uh, failure from uh, learning from your failure, uh, adaptability, innovation, uh, exclusive and inclusive diversity. So these are on pages five onwards of learning outcome four. Then the next pass criteria is looking at Analyzing the role of managers and team leaders in the personal and professional development of others. And this, again, is learning outcome four. And we are looking at page 10 onwards. So you are looking at things like, you know, feedback, analyze the role of managers in personal and professional development and team leaders. And you'll be looking at things like, you know, uh, set uh, some aspects to consider could be things like setting clear expectations, uh, providing guidance and support, uh, offering opportunities for learning development, 
creating this culture of learning and innovation, uh, leading by example, supporting the work-life balance and advocating resources and opportunities. So they're really important for that. So this is for task two. There's two parts to the past one. Are you okay with the two parts? Yes. Any questions on them? Richard Abimbola, any no. questions no. on that? No. Okay. No. So let's no, no on question on my part. Yeah. Okay. No question. Yeah. So now we're moving on to the extension activity. And this is where you want to achieve the distinction, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> so the report must also include. So this is for task two. OK, so if you just think about it for task one and task two, if you want to achieve a distinction, you will do everything we've gone through. OK, so that is for the distinction. So this one to achieve a distinction, you must do this assess how managers and team leaders can develop an effective uh, learning culture. And for this one, you will look at page 16, learning outcome four. And this is how managers and team leaders can develop an effective learning culture. So here you would look at things like leading by example, setting clear expectation, resources, knowledge sharing, constructive feedback, promoting continuous development, creating a safe learning environment, providing coaching and mentorship, facilitating learning opportunities, and you know trying to utilize contribution, development and growth. So this looks at pages 16 onwards on 4D1 on learning outcome four. Now for this learning outcome assessment criteria, we've looked at learning outcome four, AC 4.1, 4.2 and 4D1. So for task one, we've covered learning outcome one, two and three. For task two, the only learning outcome you need to really concentrate on is learning outcome four. OK, so these are the two tasks. Now, like I said, if you want to achieve a distinction, you have to do everything. You have to do the extension activities and all the past ones. Uh, and if you want to achieve your, uh, a distinction, you have to do the past merit and distinction uh, elements. If you want to achieve a pass, you will only do the pass. And if you want to do the merit ones, you will achieve the pass and merit ones. Is that clear for everyone? Is that clear for Abimbola and Richard? Is that okay? Yeah, very clear and okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Have you got any questions before we look at the referencing and the general guidance? Oh, on my part, no questions. Abimbola, any questions? Okay. So referencing, you need to make sure you are referencing. Do you know what the, the using the Harvard system of referencing is the one that we use? at UK Varsity and that's the one where you source all your information and make sure you reference it and I will show you towards the end a link to um, a, a software online that will help you produce referencing okay at the end of the assignment make sure you do a conclusion and it could be a small conclusion okay it don't have to be a large conclusion just to conclude the assignment make sure you do a reference list or a bibliography OK, make sure you have that and it needs to be in chronological order. OK, make sure it's in alphabetical order and chronological order. Assignment guidance and support. So make sure you start with an introduction and end with a conclusion. And this is what we've been through. So it's just some refreshing for you. Make sure you use Harvard system for referencing. You can refer to online sites that may help, such as Neil's Toolbox. Do you know, has anyone used Neil's toolbox? No, no. Okay. Just remind me, if I forget at the end, I'll show you how to use Neil's toolbox to do referencing, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, if you are using diagrams, please make sure you reference them accordingly because you can't just take someone else's work and say it's your work. Everything needs to be referenced. Make sure you have a bibliography reference list and it's in alphabetical order, as I mentioned earlier. Try to use more examples when explaining certain concepts, for example, when looking at theories or any other examples. Make sure you're using the assessment criteria, like we said, as a heading of each part. So at task one, look at AC each part. Make sure it's a heading, like we mentioned. Do not change the wording. You need to be referring to the indicative content all the time and checking the word count. 
important points give proper headings and subheadings not do not use bullet points because it's not an academic piece of work then okay make sure you your document looks presentable and professional number your figures and tables follow the numbering on the assignment presentation against the assignment brief ensure at least 12 to 15 references reference should be harvard referencing which i'm going to show you Keep a check on the word count, so it could be 20% tolerance limit for AI, only under 20%, otherwise it would be referred for academic misconduct. Word limit report, 3,500. And remember, there's a grading in this course, pass, merit and distinction. Useful tips, focus on the task and the command verbs. Read what you are being asked. So if it's explain, define, describe, assess, examine, clarify, and the word counts are just there for that as well. Compare, contrast. Referencing, which we mentioned, Harvard referencing. So if you are using something from uh, uh, the slides, you need to uh, make sure that you are referencing them, which we'll look at earlier, later, later on how you reference them. If you're referencing in text, you need to use the author's name and the date. So you need to make sure you are not copying and pasting work as it is plagiarism and it would lead to academic misconduct. Make sure you reference all your sources. Make sure you check your grammar and spelling and avoid using American style spelling, the Zs instead of the Ss, like organization with the S. Refer to ebooks and journals in Moodle and any sort of additional resources. You could have your uh, the SWOT analysis on there, a developmental plan example on there, your SMART acronym on there as well. Uh, so refer to Moodle for any additional sources. If you are using UK Varsity Slides, then the reference would be MDT 2022. So that's where you've got it from. Bibliography, multidisciplinary, learning outcome one, number slides, 2 to 10, UK Varsity, published on 15th of this, uh, January 2023. So you need to identify that you've taken it and in the bibliography. This is the main text. This will go in the main text, which is the assignment. This will go in the bibliography at the end. Okay. Any queries or questions, email learnerwork at ukvarsities.co.uk. Submission of your assignment must be done on learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. When you submit your assignment, make sure you put in the assignment that you are expecting a distinction, okay? Say you are, that is what you are aiming for, a distinction. So when you, not in the assignment, in the email, when you send it to learnerwork at ukvarsity and link your assignment, make sure you just put in the email that you are expecting, um, aiming for a distinction or if you're aiming for a merit or a pass. And now that we've finished, you've got two weeks uh, to complete the assignment because the unit's been delivered and it's finished now, okay? Any questions around uh, any of the useful tips or any grammar or anything like that? Make sure you check your grammar. It's really important you refer to your grammar, okay? Any questions around what we've just gone through? And then I'm going to show you Neil's well, toolbox. Have you got any questions on my part? Nothing yeah, on your part. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Abimbola, are you okay? No, the main thing is... Okay. No question, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> Make sure you are sticking to the command words, okay? What are they asking? Copy and paste that. Do not change the wording, okay? So this is how you would do it. Let me just go on to um show you Neil's toolbox. So let's just share this so at least you have an idea. So if you go into Google, okay, and just put in Neil's Toolbox. So if you put Neil's Toolbox, there's other ones you could use as well, but um, I show my students this because I think it's quite easy to use. So can you see that? It says Neil's Toolbox, yes? Can you see that, Richard Abimbola? Yeah, I can Excellent. see it. So if you go to that, and you go to, if you want to reference a book, let's go on a book, okay? So it's got referencing magazines, newspapers, email, uh, film, uh, you know, uh, website, everything. Just go on to referencing a book, okay? Let's just go on that. If you go on to that, so you, they're asking for the book title. Let's put it as personal 
just a just an example okay so there might not be a book personal development plan okay and then the author uh smith so the first or you would put smith his surname and then j okay the publisher could be anything on the inside the book so peacock the place it was published maybe london the year of publication could be 2022 and it may be second edition or ninth edition. You don't need to put the pages on, okay? If you, you, Because that would be not, let's just put it in, okay? So then you would press generate reference. So can you see that there? It's made it for you. Can you see that? I've been baller, Richard? Yeah, yeah. I can it's see. made it for you. It's, yeah. it's put it's put the dots in the right place. It's put the commas mm -hmm. in the right place. So what would you do with this now? What do you think you would do this? Would you copy this and put uh, yeah. it in your reference list? Yeah. Excellent. You would copy this and you would put this in your reference list at the back because it's done it for you. It's done everything for you. Okay. You just had to put in the author, the name of the book, the edition, the place it was published, and it's made it for you. So you would just copy and paste this into your bibliography at the end. It's really easy to use. Is that okay, Richard? Yeah, yes. I don't think is Richard on. I've been bothered, that's okay for you, so you understand yeah. that it's easy to use. So yes. let's go back, okay, and see if we could do another one so let's do um referencing a website yes okay so let's get the author's name so in the website there may be an author's name if there's no author's name it's okay okay at the article title maybe pdp the website so let's just get a website link let's just find any link right let's just find this copy right we'll go back to that this is the website name, so it might be uh, Sage. Then we've got the the URL. So here we'll put the URL. So then you put that and it generates it for you. Oh, God, fill out the requirements year 2023. And then if known, okay, so generate. There, can you see it's made it for you? Can you see that, Abimbola? Yes, I can yes. see it. And just copy and paste that. Richard, are you okay with the referencing? Because it's made it for you, you just have to copy and paste this and it shows you when you accessed it as well. So try yeah, to... Yeah, we can see. Yeah. It's quite... It's easy to use because it's put all the dots and commas and everything in the right place for you. And this is the system we're going to be using, Harvard system for referencing. And this is for all your assignments. So the different generators you can use online. But my students, uh, when I've referred to students, they've enjoyed Neil's toolbox because it tells you you can generate different things. Any questions around uh, Neil's toolbox? Has it? Has it been helpful to use that Neil's toolbox? Yeah, it's, it's, it's helpful. Oh, it's good. Easy to and, use, and, yes. it, and you could use that, Abimbola, for all your assignments. It doesn't mean it just for this unit. It could be used for all the units. Okay. And, you know, make sure, you know, you take the guidance into account for all the units, okay? Not just for this unit. Referencing, make sure you don't copy plagiarism, make sure you structure, structure it as an academic piece of work. It's so important. Avoid using bullet points. I've known people that have used bullet points and uh, they haven't passed the assignment. So don't use that. It needs to be an academic piece of work that flows. Okay. Any questions yeah. on the assignment discussion or anything about the assignment? Abimbola, any questions? Richard, yeah, any no, questions? No, from my side, I'm okay. Excellent. So now, uh, if you have any queries or questions, just email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk and submission of the assignment will be done on learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk and good luck with doing the assignment and hopefully you will all aim for a distinction and get a good mark, yeah? 
yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thank for attending you. today's session. Okay. Uh, and thank you in cooperating and hopefully this has helped you and give you some feedback around where you can do get the points on the assignment. Okay. Or the final thing I want to show you, there is one last thing, uh, just it's the, quickly the assignment brief, which is on uh, Moodle for, I think, it, I just want to show you uh, how it looks. So you've got an exam, uh, you've got an idea of how the assignment uh, discussion actually looks. So when you go on to Moodle, uh, you can see that it looks like this. Okay, so let me share that with you. It's there. So it's on Moodle. I've just done everything on this, but it looks like this. Okay, this is your assignment brief. Okay, can you see this? It's on Moodle now, okay? Can you see all this, yeah? Yeah. So this is on Moodle. This is the assignment brief. But I've done everything from here. It's a replica onto the slides, okay? Okay. Thank so you. you just, if you want, this is on Moodle. All your resources, all the developmental plan, all the SWOT analysis, everything is on Moodle that you need to refer to, okay? Okay. Thank you for attending today's session and good luck with getting on with the yeah. assignment, okay? Thank you, Thank you Thank so you. much. Have a nice uh, weekend. Thank you. Okay, look bye. after yourself. Bye. bye. Bye, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wish you bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.